on April 14, 1994, when I was only a 16-year-old child, a Serbian police officer burst into my family's home. He was looking for my father and my brothers, despite the fact that they were not there. I was with my mother, my aunt, and my two cousins. The police officer ordered us to show him our IDs. After taking a look at my ID, he kept it, and he said I had to go to the police station to give a statement about the men of our household. At this moment, my uncle walked over from his house and simply asked, why are you taking our girl? The police officer replied, don't anybody move or I'll shoot everybody. My mom told him to take her in my place. No, she's a child, replied the police officer. She will not be able to lie about whereabouts of her, brothers and, uh, of her father and brothers. The Serbian police officer then ripped me away from my mother's arms and took me to the Serbian village nearby. He walked me into an empty house just off of the main road. He threw me onto a stack of corn that was piled against the house. I started to yell, and I screamed on top of my lungs. That's when he took me inside of his car, and he started raping me. I remember everything. I was held at the gunpoint. He abused me and raped me repeatedly. I was shocked and exhausted. I lost consciousness. When I regained consciousness, I cried with no control, begging him to kill me. No, he said, I won't, because you will suffer more this way. He was right. I have suffered greatly since then. I remember he had a bandage on his left hand, and he was saying that Kosovo Liberation Army shot him, and he was taking revenge on me. Every time that I screamed, he threatened to take me to an area full of Serbian forces where more men would rape me. After he was done assaulting me, he went into the local store and left me alone in a car. I know the village was primarily Serbians, so I was terrified to make a move. Shortly after the policemen police left, an older man came out of the same store and walked towards me. He forced me outside of the car and took me to unfinished house. I distinctly remember this man. He was an old man, and he was crippled. There in that house, he raped me. A few hours later, I was taken back to my village and left on the street. I walked through the village cemetery, hoping that my life went in just right then and there, because I didn't want to go home to explain to anybody what had just happened to me. They told me not to tell anybody what had just happened. They said to tell them I was at the police station giving a statement about the whereabouts of my father and my brothers. Somehow I managed to make it to my uncle's house. I didn't have to explain to anything what happened to me. By judging on the conditions they saw me, they knew that no one takes a 16-year-old child to the police station for a testimony just to return her a few hours later with scratches, bruises, and torn up. The next day, I reported my case to the Kosovo Liberation Army. Later, I reported to the United Nations mission in Kosovo. I also reported everything to the European rule of law mission in Kosovo. The perpetrators of the risk crime, they were identified eventually. However, 20 years have passed, my torturers are not being held accountable for the crimes they, are, they have done, and they are still at large. There are 20,000 women and men who suffered crimes of war, sexual violence in Kosovo. All they want is justice. All I want is justice. Although today I live a happy life in Texas as a proud wife and as a proud mother of two daughters who were born in the United States, and thankfully they will never have to end and encounter the tragedies that I experienced. I will never have a peace with my past until justice is delivered. Thus, today, I call on the representative of the United States Congress to address the impunity of war crimes and human rights abuse that was committed in Kosovo by taking immediate action 
to seek justice for all survivors. Thank you.